Okay, folks. Yar, sorry, I was having signal problems on my end. I, I switched the tethering to my phone, uh, so now we shouldn't have any further problems. So without further ado, Luis, uh, you want to repeat that last thought and continue from there? Uh, exactly from, from, from where on? Uh, I, I was trying to deal with some issues. Uh, uh, maybe start, uh, I forget what you were talking about because I was trying to deal with not being live and stuff. Um, if you remember. Okay, so I was talking on the, um, with the, on the, was it police? I think. Um, were we hello? trying to, I'm sorry? Oh, I just said hello, I'm back. Okay. I was off for some reason. Yeah. Oh, just so you know, Bri, I just switched uh, the internet to my cell phone, so oh, we okay. shouldn't have any problems. Uh, so we're yeah, just. Yeah, it sounds a lot clearer. Yeah, so we're just continuing from that and dealing okay. with that. Yep. Okay, Luis, go ahead. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of things that you could actually see on the net. There's um, I mean, we, we we try to post everything on on either Facebook or Instagram or whatever. We have a we have we're 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 telling people to live stream now. We are we have Ricardo Ripoll that it's gonna be going around this the country just documenting things right now we're only in pictures where we're gonna go video um, so so one one important thing is that if you here right now if you talk too much if you if you are making a real opposition you're gonna be you're gonna be apprehended I mean you're gonna be you're gonna be hit in the head by government because there's very little tolerance right now yeah on, on everything that it's against them, it's it's either you're with them or or if if you're against them, then they're gonna try to shut you down or they either just right. uh, bomb you with a lot of lies. That it, right. what that's one thing that really bothers me is that they're going to the public opinion of the world, saying things that are not true. I mean, we we are. We have more poor than ever. We have worse um, health than ever. We have more people that are not getting the right education. Um, and they're saying all the contrary in the UN or everywhere. And th th this is not true. We, we want to spread the word that this is not the real case. People are coming in from other countries to see how, um, how good uh, some like the surprises visit from the president are they have not give everything anything good to the people it's it is the only depth of the country that it's never going to be paid back this next year we're going to have a deficit on the budget national budget of 30 um, 73 thousand million dollars that's the deficit of this country next year wow. public see so um i mean we're a verge we're we're on the way of puerto rico we're on the way to being a grecia uh greece and uh we're, we're we're trying to we're trying to get the word out that we don't want that we're being taken there but we don't want to be there uh, Luis, uh, I would like to uh, share some uh, share some uh, observations with you. I've been thinking as I've been listening to you talk. Um, so first of all, um, going back to uh, earlier when you were, when I was asked about if I had any practical advice to uh, to give to a human rights activist in the Dominican Republic, and I was alluding to the uh, trying to build bridges, information bridges with police and, and law enforcement. Uh, here in here in Calgary, uh, in any event, um, my experience with the uh, local city police force has been fairly positive overall. Um, uh, we've been glad to see them at, at many of the rallies, particularly when there are you know indigenous people there, because of the fact that there are racist people out there. And I have not seen any examples at rallies I've attended, but I've, I've been told that 
at previous rallies where there was no police that um, there were times when indigenous women would be verbally harassed and even physically assaulted so that's the first observation i want to make is that at least in in this city um there's a, a pretty civil relationship between the police and uh, and civilians uh secondly i've also had the opportunity at these rallies to discuss issues with uh, local police officers who were in attendance uh, uh, who were interested in knowing why we were there for example at, at rallies uh, to promote uh, a greater reliance on alternative sources of energy um, of shared information I mean these are people oh right you sort of cut out you were saying this these clean air and, and, and clean water now getting yeah. oh I'm sorry uh, okay uh, yeah, well, I, I, I'm not sure at what point I cut out. Um, these are event. people. You said these are people that. Oh, okay. These are these are people who have families, and I mean, they, you know, they're interested in having a clean environment as well. I mean, who doesn't benefit from having a clean environment? So anyway, getting my com making my comments more the Dominican Republic um, experience, Luis. I think that uh, one thing that you, as a human rights advocate, need to be very aware of and very cautious of is the not just very real pro probability of there being um, plants, uh, moles, um, spies in your in your um, cause, but yes, there are spies, government spies and agents, and you need to be very careful about these people. And, and I'll tell you straight up that we've also had experience with this uh, even up here in Canada. And they're known as, uh, the French term is agent provocateur, provocative agent. Um, when you have people in an organization who are deliberately saying, "Well, let's, we, we got to get up there and, and we we should we should attack the police. We need to be yeah. more aggressive." This, I assure you, is a clear so warning signal to be very careful of that person because typically these are police agents whose job it is to deliberately provoke and therefore get a more heavy-handed response from the authorities. Um, it's, a, it's a sad fact of history, but it's true that uh, national liberation movements throughout history, protest movements throughout history, have indeed been infiltrated by, by uh, government agents. I mean, if you know anything about the history of the Irish struggle for, for independence, um, the unkindest uh, cut in the, of all would come from a fellow Irish person speaking with that lovely lilt who you found out was a, a collaborator with the uh, British uh, British military and security forces. So you need to be very careful about about who is in your ranks and if you have people who are deliberately radical then you need to be very very leery about these people. They may indeed be uh, government, uh, government agents. Not to say that they necessarily are but this is a clear warning signal that you need to get behind this person and find out who exactly they are and be very wary of these people. Yeah, I was telling, I was saying earlier that in, in, in our pro protest, we are constantly saying this is, this is a Pacific protest. This is, <coughs> uh, uh, there's no violence to be, um, there's no necessary in, in necessity for violence or a verbal aggression or physical aggression. We are always reminding people that because we don't want the, uh, we don't want we don't want uh, to provoke and um, actually last protest for some of the press said that we were um, we were um, interrupting the day-to-day -day life of people or whatever we were on this on the sidewalk we mm. we weren't even on the streets the police blocked two blocks down the whole area yeah. every street and they were saying that was us and that it, it was them they even used ambulances from the 911 service to do that yeah um yeah we are we are we are we are we are conscious of that we are trying to work on that i mean we're yeah. being careful with that um not 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 but even even doing that um, they has charged us, a charge against us um, already twice. Because, um, you know, this is a, the police here are not well-educated. They're not well-trained. This is, uh, if they, they, are, they only obey orders. 
and yeah. the orders are repression. That's yeah. the order. Yeah. Well, I'd like to share with you, Luis and uh, and uh, Ariel and, and Day and uh, the various people who are listening about um, you know some observations of my own experience with um, a protest uh, movement back uh, in New Brunswick, of which Day is very familiar. And this was the Mi'kmaq led. Um, resistance uh, to uh, to hydraulic fracturing or fracking as it's uh, more commonly known. It was a broad-based uh, organization led by the Mi'kmaq people, the original peoples of the land, the original defenders of the land, Acadians and Anglophones, so there was a unique coalition. And um, things, uh, it was a year, what a year-long uh, camp that was set up and things uh, came to uh, a, a point where the police had actually raided the, uh, the peaceful camp that the people had set up and uh, during the uh, during the event there were uh, there were a handful of uh, police patrol cars that uh, were uh, torched with Molotov cocktails now it was interesting to see the difference between how the media covered that which of course was to focus on the burning patrol cars and you know people out of control and knowing what actually took place on the ground from knowing personally many of the organizers and finding out what had ta actually taken place uh, I was told that uh, that these police cars were not newer police cars. They were, you know, vintage Crown Victorias that the Mount the Federal Police Force stopped using back uh, well over ten years ago. These were stripped down cars, and the two people, two men who were seen fleeing the scene, were identified by by my sources as uh, two known paid agents of the police. One of them certainly has uh, has been involved in protest before. The strange thing is the police had aerial photos, photos, they had photographs of these guys, they were never caught and never arrested. So the big question going begging is why? Uh, so this is just one example of something that I am personally aware of where there was indeed agent provocateurs whose job it was to provoke a response and to therefore uh, get media, corporate media, um, to cover it in ways that made the made the people uh, look bad. The happy ending to this story, though, as Jay himself knows very well, is that the people of New Brunswick not, not only succeeded in, in voting out the government that was uh, backing hydraulic fracturing, but the company, which was a Texas uh, company, Texas headquartered company uh, called Southwest uh, Nova Resources, they abandoned fracking. So it does show you that uh, the people united can effect do can result in change. Um, but unfortunately, the Dominican Republic experience, of course, is, is very different. It's a very different culture, and and uh, I, I really don't have any any uh, concrete solutions, I suppose, to, to the problems down there, other than to stay safe um, and. Watch your back and uh, be very cautious of of people who suggest that uh, we need to be more aggressive. Because remember, the authorities have the guns. That is true. Oh, we're going to be we're trying that. That one th one important thing that I haven't said is that <coughs> we got we got a ruling from a um, from a, a judge. We we submitted a. I don't know. I don't know the term in English, but we we submitted um, an action it, uh, to protect us after the aggression we had um, two Wednesday ago, and they ruled on our favor. It was actually a, a protection a petition, and um, we we went this went last Wednesday with that ruling from the judge, and. The the um, police minister and the police just didn't obey. Didn't didn't put any case to that ruling. Um, so they were against the ju the the law, let's say. And they they did they they went more. They outruled us. Every hour passed by, more and more police people got there. We were 80, and we were outnumbered probably by 200 police officers. Um, so that that's a concern because they, if they feel they are um, above the law, then 
this is this is nothing more than a dictatorship and and it really wor- worries us um and this not in this days and we cannot permit that yeah yeah Jay, I'm just gonna have. I'm gonna just uh, disappear for about a minute to just grab a drink of water. Um, I will be right back, and I'll let you know when I'm back. Okay. Alrighty, and thank you there, Bry, in Calgary. And uh, let, let's uh, talk to Ariel, who uh, takes the video part. So Ariel in New York City, who's originally uh, from the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Uh, you want to pipe in here and tell us uh, your thoughts about what we were talking about there, Ariel? Ariel, no audio. No audio. Ariel? No audio. Whoops. Uh, Ariel. Okay. How about now? How about That's now? better. That's better. Yeah. 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 I had it. Uh, yeah. I was clicking on the, uh, I was clicking on the, uh, on the New York City link. Thanks for uh, Dagoberto. Uh, I, I understand Dagoberto is uh, in, uh, in Santa Domingo. I understand. Yes. Oh, this this is great, man. <laughs> yeah, this is this is great. This is pumped uh, from this side of the house, from the cyber activist side of the house. I keep uh, I keep uh, harping. Uh, this is pump new oxygen. This is pump new oxygen into 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 everybody's uh, uh, into everybody's veins. Uh, what was that question again, Dee? Would you please repeat the question? If you want to just pipe in, I know uh, Brian and Luis were talking about a lot of things, uh, and uh, just add your comments. And by the way, uh, uh, L. Damien on the live chat said that Matt Hopert, aka Stop Motion Solo, is going to be live streaming that New York uh, uh, Dominican Republic antique corruption rally at seven o'clock this wednesday so matt's going to be live streaming so that's going to be great oh uh yeah let me uh oh i lost i lost my pop out here (laughs) you know me i'm a worry wart i lost my pop out momentarily and and by the way folks i just want to say that at 70 years old ariel fornari is certainly the world's oldest live streamer noted fact (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm the only. Uh, I, I'm par- I'm proudly the only video ninja, uh, which is the term that I plagiarized from the original uh, Occupy Wall Street uh, activist back in 2011. When I first heard, when I first saw that on Twitter, where are the video ninjas? Where are the video ninjas? You know, when the girls, when the girls were being kettled and then being pepper sprayed in Sakoti Park and all that stuff. And uh, I'm I'm on the retired video ninja list. Uh, I might come out of retirement. Uh, yeah, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, D. I'm excited. Uh, please repeat the question. I'm excited. So I add your comments to the, how uh, you know uh, the last three Wednesdays uh, in not just the capital, but it's it's. Uh, Luis was telling me in the tech setup, uh, it's spreading throughout the country. So it's not just in the capital; it's elsewhere. And now. I believe this is extended to New York City, which is great. So what are your feelings about all these protests and how growing they are within the country? Because you certainly know the history of protests in the Dominican Republic. It has not been that big. It's just a recent phenomenon. And the way this anti-corruption protest uh, has taken off, uh, uh, tell us your feelings on that. Uh, yes. Uh, to reiterate, to reiterate what what our friend uh, Luis Muda uh, uh, from Santo Domingo uh, has been uh, have been mentioning again. Uh, I'm so delighted, man. I'm so delighted that that we have these guys live. Uh, D. And again, I appreciate I appreciate you opening up this forum. I appreciate you opening up this forum. And uh, you 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 are breaking new ground, believe it or not. Again, you know I get excited. I'm sorry, but I'm uh, I get excited. But definitely, okay. Uh, the dynamics, as I see it from the cyber activist uh, point of the house, uh, Santiago is coming online on Wednesday. Uh, that's a city that I was that I've been residing in. 
Uh, so they're going to have uh, in the Capitol in Santo Domingo in Santiago, they're going to have an action almost simultaneously, I understand, in the northern uh, tourist city of Puerto Plata, where there's a lot of uh, uh, five and four star hotels in the, in the northern city of Puerto Plata, there's going to be actions. Uh, Luis said in Barahona. And, awesome. and we, yeah, and so, yeah, the more input we get now, uh, 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 the, the mothership, uh, again, to, to extrapolate, to extrapolate from the Occupy movement, uh, D, which uh, you come out of that, of course, you were on the ground, I was out on the ground, I was, I was, uh, uh, I collaborated, uh, I collaborated online since uh, uh, September 11, 2011, even from the Adbusters Day. Those of us that had that experience, uh, you know, there was a before and there was an after, okay, and that forever changed uh, that forever changed the panorama uh, of activism and cyber activism and, and struggle movements worldwide. So I would uh, I would make a, I would make a comparison that the Cadena Humana Oiso movement in Santo Domingo is the mothership. I would say uh, well you can't compare it to global revolution because uh, they don't have they don't have a live stream uh, uh, they don't have a live stream station yet. Uh, but uh, as far as the activist side of the house, Cadena Humana Oizoa in Santa Domingo is the mothership. They're the nucleus, and it's uh, and it's spreading out. You can sense. I mean, you almost don't have to be in Santa Domingo anymore. Uh, not taking away uh, uh, the uh, uh, the transcendental historical moment uh, that the Dominican Republic is going through right now. Let me tell you one thing. You can almost read between the lines, both uh, online and from the Dominican Republic media that I have been monitoring on my Android. I got an application uh, picking up uh, different uh, Dominican Republic channels, and uh, one of the uh, prominent. I, I uh, follow. Uh, I follow uh, the career of a prominent uh, uh, Dominican TV journalist called Marino Sapete. Who, uh, who is uh, a very ethical and uh, uncompromising uh, journalist? And every time, every time I have monitored Marino Sapete live on TV, uh, he updates you, and, and he has the pulse beat. Marino Sapete has the pulse beat of the nation. The Dominican Republic government is definitely worried, but they're not showing it. Uh, they're not going to come out uh, on a press on a press conference, and they're not going to say uh, we're we're sweating the load because uh, Cadena Humana Oisoe uh, is uh, is having protests over there in front of the uh, Oisoe building. Okay, of course they're not going to say that. Okay, they they they're not going to admit uh, that they're worried, but they have to be worried for the simple reason that I have never seen uh, this degree of resolve from a social movement. Uh, protest social movement and the Dominican Republic in the time from the time that I started collaborating uh, collaborating with them. As, I, as you know, I'm not a gr on the ground activist and I never have claimed to be one. But from the cyber activist uh, side of the house, you can almost sense, you can almost sense that definitely the Dominican Republic government is worried. And we are going to do uh, all that we can in our arena, whether we're cyber activists, whether we're live streamers like D. Shanger, uh, people that have uh, the technical capacity uh, and the know-how to uh, assist, to give technical assistance to these movements. As these movements start uh, to apply, to apply interactive technology, that is, that is when uh, things are going to start happening because this is going to be globalized. It's not going to just stay in the Dominican Republic. And everybody knows it's open knowledge that the president of Guatemala right now is in jail because there were some massive movements. Uh, there's a massive protest movement in Guatemala, okay? And he was a collaborator for one of the most uh, bloodiest dictators uh, in the history of Guatemala, who was uh, General Efraín Rios Montt. And Otto Pérez Molina, the, uh, the, the recent president of Guatemala, is in jail right now awaiting uh, awaiting trial. Uh, you know, the Dominican Republic government is a very self-righteous government. I have never seen a government that is so self-righteous and that likes to distort reality, okay? But the Dominican people are waking up. 
and Cadena Humana Hoy Soy is uh, in the forefront of this movement, and we're going to back them up from New York City, and uh, that's all I have to say for the moment. Um, I have uh, Day and Luis, and, and hi, Ariel. Thanks for dropping in. I have some uh, comments to make. I was listening to that with a, a lot of interest, Day. Um, can you everybody hear me okay? Absolutely. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, first of all, um, uh, you know, Ariel was alluding to um, the Dominican Republic uh, government uh, being concerned about its image beyond its borders. And that's a point which I want to emphasize. It's not just the Dominican Republic government. Governments everywhere are concerned about the image that they project. <clears throat> and, and, you know, communist China is concerned about its image. So those of us who are activists, we can embarrass the government by broadcasting uh, live from, from, uh, from protests, by having live streamers from the ground. It's very important to get that message out because governments are concerned about their image and that's how we can help to influence and shape events. Also, I want to say, and this is perhaps more for Luis's benefit, um, I had thought as I was listening to Ariel talk about ways in which to raise awareness and to commit revolutionary acts without, you know, actually committing acts of violence and, and the, the uh, act that immediately comes to mind is the simple revolutionary act of writing a poem or writing a song or writing a play producing a play, doing doing street theater, presenting plays. Um, we are, like to, we're, we are yeah. on that already. Yep. Good, good, because that has been very effective throughout history. I would like to uh, reference the, uh, the experience of the, the Irish. I mean, the Irish have the dubious distinction of being have, having experienced the longest occupation by a foreign power in history, eight centuries of domination. Uh, by uh, by the British in, in Ireland, and that's a national question which still has to be finally resolved because I do believe in one Ireland, one republic, one land for the people of Ireland, and that includes the six counties of Ulster province. But before I go any further I, I, on that, I do want to say that uh, in looking up the, the history of the, the Irish, I mean, there have been, of course, many examples of rebellion throughout the history of Ireland, but there was something that arguably was as effective, perhaps even more effective in the grand scheme of things, and that was the wonderful use of the Irish and their voice through literature and through song. Many of the songs that uh, all of us sing on St. Patrick's Day is we all get a little bit Irish, even those of us who aren't Irish, those of us who have a drop of Irish blood in us become even more Irish on St. Patrick's Day, and we get together and we sing the songs, and we listen to these lovely songs. Well, they are lovely songs songs of heartbreak and redemption and, and survival and struggle. But what many people who don't know the, the cultural and social history of the Irish people, what they don't know is that many of these songs indeed were written as coded messages for the people of the time. Uh, there's a song that comes to mind from the 18th century called The Wind, the Wind That Shakes the Corn. And this was actually a song that was calling the people of Ireland to rise up and to, uh, to take control of their own destiny. It was a call for revolution. So through song, through literature, and now through the immense power, obviously, of mass media, instantaneous communication, anybody can produce a video, anybody can produce uh, uh, you know, uh, even a movie. It's never been cheaper in history to reach large numbers of people. So, Luis, um, you can look to the success of the Irish people uh, for inspiration and, indeed, uh, to the success of other peoples who have successfully resisted oppression through music, dance, poetry, song, and movies. Great. Thank you. Yes. So what's the mood of the people, Luis? Uh, how are they feeling with all these? Uh, I, I'm sure because <laughs> now every Wednesday they're having these anti-corruption uh, protests and uh, the numbers are getting bigger. And uh, what's the feeling on the ground? And, and when did it start taking off throughout the Dominican Republic? Maybe give um, us a brief history of these last three weeks and this Wednesday. The, the, the feeling of the people is, uh, it, it's good. You, you, you can sense it through the, the social um, media, the, the Facebook, Instagram. You know, a lot of people are, are just um, expressing themselves and just being creative, doing 
um, memes and um, drawings of the situations. Um, this Wednesday, from the, uh, Friday, when it's when it started to go to other cities. And um, actually, yesterday and today is when we got most of the cities and New York to 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 do a, a, a human chain. Uh, I, I'm, I was reading just now that probably in Miami there will there there'll be one too. That's not confirmed still. Um, people want to. People are frustrated. People are, it has zero confidence on the government. Um, something good to say is that this the 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 the, the public uh, person that was handling Oisoe was was asked to go to trial by the people and. The, the government decided he was he didn't go he didn't need to go to trial, so he's um, free. All the all the people that or public servers that were accused, even by the the note that the the guy that was committed suicide allegedly um, appointed are free on the streets. We have no law whatsoever when it comes to government people, but if someone steals uh, orange from a tree that people can go to jail for three four maybe a year um, because of uh, orange and because of stealing millions and hundreds of millions of dollars if you're in the government there's the, the law doesn't doesn't uh, apply for you and uh, that's basically what has most of the people um, protesting, uncomfortable, um, frustrated. But it's been like this since eight years now. And um, people just don't think that we have a justice that we can trust, let's say. So the last three Wednesdays, it was just in the capital and Santo Domingo, and now it's spreading out for sure in New York City, maybe Miami as well, which is great. And talk about some of the other places in the Dominican Republic that can be protesting for the first time this Wednesday, and it's going to be a weekly one. Uh, I'm sorry? What are some of the other places in the DR that's going to be protesting uh, this Wednesday? We're going to have... We're gonna have the Puerto Plata in the north coast. We're gonna have Santiago, which is the 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 second largest city. Um, we're gonna have Bonao. We're gonna have um, La Romana, where Casa de Campo is. It's a very tourist um, uh, uh, province. Uh, San Pedro, um, Asua. Uh, so let's say that it's spreading well throughout the island and. Um, and in, in New York and probably Miami, which is good because, you know, the Dominican population in New York, it's huge. It's, it's over a million Dominicans that live in New York right now. Wow. You, you get a good sense of what the feeling is of the pop Dominican population <clears throat> just by looking at New York. May I, uh, may I jump in here then, Go Luis, ahead. because yeah, you've said something uh, that I need to comment on. <clears throat> With such a large expatriate Dominican uh, population centered in New York City of a million strong, I didn't realize it was that big. You yeah. have a very strong and fertile presence there in New York City that needs to be tapped for uh, providing support to the people back home, but also they can be tapped for fundraising to raise money for activists such as yourself who are on the ground. I mean, I would like to uh, allude to the Irish experience, if I may, for a moment, um, recognizing, of course, you know, there are different cultural and social experiences, but still, there is an instructive lesson. Um, the Irish uh, population, the, the ethnic Irish population in Boston and New York City uh, was very helpful in terms of raising funds uh, for the uh, the cause of Irish uh, Irish independence and Irish sovereignty, so you have if you have a million people of Dominican descent 
centered in, in one population center in New York City, that is a very strong resource that can be tapped on to, uh, to raise money for the people back home. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, and, and actually, we've been looking at that because the, the, um, we're going into elections um, next year. In May of next year, and um, these people modify the constitution so they could stay and run again. Uh, I mean that it was prohibited, and um, re-election it's costing probably half of the budget of next year. And they, we were measuring how things were in the New York, the opposite party, which is a new party. It's a very young, um, forty-seven, forty-eight years. Um, Luis Abinader candidate, it's uh, it's it's very 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 strong, uh, which has this government taking a another attitude against people, against uh, riots, against protests, because they 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 feel that they probably feel that this is the opposition doing stuff, and this is not po politics. This is this is actually. The, the people that are fed up with what's going on. Uh, but yeah, New York, New York, we, we have that resource. And, and when, when New York speaks, I mean, you get, you get media from outside the country that covers stuff. And then so some of that, it's, it's hurt here. When, when we have pressure from outside the country, then the, you feel the pressure on the government here more than when it's made here in the country. And that is amazing. Especially if it affects tourism, because tourism is a huge industry uh, in the DR, correct? Totally, totally. It's a major um, a income, source of income. Well, then if, yeah, tourism being such a, a source of... Uh, source of revenue for the people of the Dominican Republic, then um, I guess one of the things I would like to raise with you, Luis, is um, has there been serious consideration given to, um, uh, you know, boycotting the DR uh, until the human rights problems are resolved? And before I go any further, on the other hand, um, you know, I have to say that if tourism is bringing money into the DR, then uh, I guess, uh, you know, any boycott, unfortunately, would have an impact on the people who rely on, on tourism for, for jobs. So it, it can be a, a, a very much a double-edged sword. So um, I'm not saying that you, you should contemplate uh, raising awareness amongst a tourist about boycotting the DR um, because there may indeed be, <clears throat> as an unintended consequence, uh, negative effects for the uh, poor people who uh, rely on that waiting job and, and tips to uh, to put food on the table for their family. So um, it's it's easy enough for somebody sitting here in comfortable North America to suggest a boycott, but that you know there are that is one That's, possibility. But that that was <coughs> that was what the Haitians were doing when when the Haitians when the repatriation or uh, and. Um, and the deportations began that weren't true. It was media because they, they didn't begin. They never begun. A, when that, the Haitians started a international campaign against the Dominican Republic that was actually attacking tourism. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that, that's what they did because that's where, 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 where activates, let's say, the the defense of the of the of the government outside because this is more projection than anything that's what the concerns them how they are looked what they're projecting what they're going to people outside or international community it's going to say that's what matters nothing yeah. else matters right yeah well that's you know uh, boycotting is another way to um, i suppose um, um affect change but like I said um, you know we have to recognize too though as an unintended consequence it might it would have an impact on the uh, on the income of people who rely on that um, that sector for uh, for uh, for a living so it, it may not necessarily be the the way to go yeah it's a it's a delicate subject there 
Yeah. Ariel? Uh, oh, one thing, Luis. Uh, yeah. Uh, what uh, What time of day does these protests start? Because the DR is on the same time zone as the Eastern time zone. Uh, uh, we are right now. Uh, when the daytime savings uh, start, we're now we're back. But it, they start at 5 in the afternoon. And the one in New York starts at 7, as and, I understand. Yeah, that, that one starts at 7. Yeah. So people can get home from work and DR. Exactly. Distance are, are in traffic, it's a lot worse. And uh, any live streamers that you know of that have been live streaming uh, any of these rallies? I know two, and um, we've contacted them. Um, one, it's going to be live streaming from Santiago, and we're trying to get the other one to live stream from here. Um, they they block our signal in most of the protests, so we cannot upload pictures or videos. But we're gonna try. So you mean they have a truck there that's jamming the signals in the protest area? They have exactly. Area? They have a signal jammer. Okay, because uh, one there's a few ways that they utilize jamming uh, stuff. Since this is a how to live stream show, and I've been jammed numerous times, and it has no effect on me. But they still try is a one uh, a truck if they could park a truck and jam the signals but if TV's there then the TV's signals are jammed as well so usually when there's TV networks there they don't utilize that truck and jamming stuff uh, they do it on a more uh, a secretive way where uh, people are carrying jamming equipment and they're dressed mm -hmm. as normal people. But for uh. that to operate, there's two ways that they could do the portable ones. One, a person has to walk within about six inches to a foot from your device, whether it's a laptop or a cell phone, to jam your signal. So if you, if you, and what that does, it temporarily disconnects you. Not that it jams it permanently, but it temporarily. Now, when you're live streaming, if your signal is jammed for less than a second, uh, you're offline. So a lot of times you think you might be live streaming, but you're not. But thankfully, a lot of the new apps, especially at Ustream, when you get jammed and you go down, it just pops back in. So that's not really an effective way. Another way with portable devices, you know, you know those guitar amps like a Marshall amp, you know, those things. It's a device very similar looking to that. So look out for those things. Now, but they need a clear line of sight. So if there's a thousand people, it's hard to jam that live streamer if they're in the middle of the crowd or near the front. Uh, they need a, a really clean line of sight. And it's just like a laser, that whole box. So those are the three ways that they could jam.